Hey everybody, welcome to another fun episode of Cook, Chat, and Chow Down. Today we are at Dr. Patel's house with his lovely wife, Jessica, and here's Dave. Oh yeah, I'm here. Don't forget about me. <laughs> um, and what are we making today? So we are making, uh, hi everyone, welcome. Uh, Let me know if you're here, you guys. Let me know if you're here, and please say hi to Dr. Patel, okay? Let me know that you can hear me okay. We always got to know that. Judy says hello. All Yay! right, Judy. What are we making today? So we are making a very quintessential comfort food from India called Kechdi. Uh, it's also called as Kechdi in some places, mm -hmm. and every state of India that you go to will have some version of this in a different, slight, a different way. Yeah. Uh, but this is a complete meal. Uh, it's easy to cook and very filling and satisfying. So we are going to get it all in the pot. So this is what we're going to do today. We're going to um, we're going to get everything into the pot and show you. And uh, Jessica, his wife, is going to direct <laughs> Dr. Patel in making this dish, and, and he's going to get everything into the pot. And then we're going to be talking about type two diabetes. Um, and we're going to answer all the questions we had in the group. Let's see who's on. Judy's on. Angie, hi. Nikayla is on. Judy says, hi, Dr. Patel. Nice to see you. Do you remember Judy from the Code Blue screening? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Judy, welcome. And Vin Spano was also at that Code Blue screening. Uh, I think he was at that. And he says, hello. All right. So tell us, what do we do first? Okay. So we're going to do oil-free. Uh, regarding the kitchen today. So first, uh, we actually... I want to ask you a question about oil-free, right? Because most times um, in Indian cooking, I've always heard that all of the beautiful spices that we use in these dishes, um, that they need to be uh, rendered in oil. So, so how do you do that without cooking with oil? <laughs> <laughs> so we'll start with the dry ingredients first. So... Um, once the pot is heated up, it's on saute, and then we'll put um, cumin seed and mustard seed in it. Okay, let, let Dr. Patel yeah. do it. You tell and him then, what to do. Yeah. So that's just a combination of cumin and mustard seeds. Mm -hmm. And we'll uh, put it in. Yeah. What is that? And then we'll okay. also go ahead and put the starfish, the bay leaf, curry leaf. Starfish. So, Bay leaf. We have the star anise. I'll see this up here. Put it up here. And uh, uh, dried red chili. The bay leaf. So there's a little interesting trivia. So the, the tree <laughs> that gives this uh, leaf also has a bark which we call cinnamon. Oh, yes. so I the, didn't know that. Yes. So the, so the bark is cinnamon and the leaves are we are used in cooking. And then this is uh, neem leaves or curry leaves. Uh, wow. We grow this in the house usually. Indian households will have a neem plant. There are a few types of neem plants, but we use this called uh, metolimno, meaning sweet version of uh, the neem leaves. Wow. And they are very good uh, in uh, getting rid of parasites. So people can take this out too in the final product, but we usually tend to eat these leaves. And they are very anti-parasitic, so We're they can eating get, it. get rid of uh, parasites from your body. June, how are you? Nice to see you here. Okay. okay. Go ahead and put it in. So we're putting it all in. Did you say what everything was? Mm -hmm. Okay, this will go to the curry leaf. Yep. The bay okay. leaf is going in. Oh, I smell something happening in the pot. So we do it dry. So, um, and so we, we missed out on two things. So there's uh, cinnamon sticks, a couple oh. of them. And uh, wow, I can smell the spices. They're sort the of clouds, dry roasted. Whole cloves. Wow. So a couple of those. What else goes now? And, and then we'll so just wait. We're going to let okay. this spices kind of uh, start popping and. You will start For feeling some room. aroma. You smell that? Oh yeah, you can smell that stuff. I'll oh, tell you. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so what does your mother think about that? Cooking without the oil, putting the spices without the oil. So initially, when we were discussing this concept of no oil cooking, uh, it was completely new because we always cooked using oil, and oil or ghee was part of our uh, cooking. But since uh, we have turned vegan. We have not been using ghee 
and we were relying more on oil, yeah. but we found mm -hmm. out that too much oil is also not good. So what happens with too much oil when you when you eat a lot of oil it, every day? It creates uh, free radicals in your body, which are these tiny chemicals which are like literally dropping bombs on your DNA. They cause cell so, damage, right? So more free radicals, more cell damage, more cell damage, more issues with cancer and diabetes and heart disease. So it's a very inflammatory. The oils are inflammatory. And isn't that true that it... Uh... So we have a second step. Oh, go ahead, second step. So we're going to... Um, Let's see. So we keep uh, a paste of uh, crushed uh, red uh, oh, green chili, chili and uh, ginger. Look at that. Uh, frozen up, so we just take a you know cube out. But if you have fresh, you can grind it fresh and put it in. Oh, it really smells good here. I wish you guys could have like smell o vision Oh, do you hear that? Wow. And the second thing that goes in is the chopped garlic. Chopped garlic. Okay. Oh my God, that smells yeah, amazing. It. I got it. Here, I got it. Here, put it close and then just There we go. Into the Everybody's pot. in. Everybody's in. <laughs> and then we're going to go ahead and put the onions in. Look over there. I got you. There we go. I'll get out of the way now. There we go. Can you guys imagine how this is smelling? All right, so um, <clears throat> what was I asking you? Oh, I have also, you know, studied about the oils and, you know, heard Dr. Esselstyn's explanations of how oils damage the endothelial lining of the arteries and, and all of that, right? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. So I was asking what does... Yeah, just go ahead and put everything in here now. All right, everything's going in. So what does your... So what did your mother think about... All right, about so we have... Uh, Cut up sweet potato. <laughs> we have the purple sweet potato. <coughs> yeah, and we have some eggplant. So all that goes in. Now, Jessica, you were telling me you could put any vegetables, yeah, any potatoes, yeah. any white potatoes, or what yeah, other potatoes. vegetables have you done this with? Um, uh, there is an Indian <laughs> vegetable <laughs> called bottle guard or dudi, which is very uh, waterous. <laughs> what is a lot it? of water. How do you spell it? Bottle guard. B-O-T-T-L-E-G-O-U-R-D. -T -T -E <coughs> oh, gourd. Okay. Gourd. This is just the frozen, the frozen vegetable mix with uh, beans, peas, and uh, I mean peas, uh, corn, and uh, carrots. I think the, the you can also put green beans <coughs> in there. Pepper. Oh, we got me. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. It's <coughs> yeah, it's the. Yeah, that's pepper. the red pepper, right? Yeah. You getting me? So okay. Now, what else? Put in the dry fruits. You call them dried fruits, huh? Dried fruits, yeah. And what are so, they? Some nuts. You don't have to, but you can enhance the dish using some uh, peanuts, some uh, cashew, and some uh, almonds. Right, and not too many either, just a little bit. So yeah, so you're lucky if you get a bite of that? Is that how that goes? Yeah, it tastes pretty good when you put the nuts in there. Yeah, yeah. and she calls it dried fruits. Isn't yeah. that neat? That's so cute. <laughs> I mean, go ahead and put everything in there. This is uh, red chili powder. This is the garam I can't masala. See it. Yeah, garam it masala. This go. is red chili powder. This is the garam masala powder. And this is powdered neem leaves. So the, the green leaves the that I showed, this is yeah. the dried powdered version of that. Wow. Wow. Patty, how are you? Don Golden is on and David Day is on. How are you guys? Go ahead. What else? So this is turmeric. Powder with esophytida, so half a teaspoon of esophytida and a, and a tablespoon of turmeric. Oh my goodness. So you still haven't put any liquid in the pot. You just you just rendered those dry spices and then we dumped all this other stuff in. And the, Go ahead, put in the whole thing, that's fine. The okay. vegetables, yeah. the vegetables add their own liquid. Yeah. So liquid. we're gonna have one and a half cup of total grains and lentils and then four and a half cups of water. So this is uh, one, it's like uh, two third tablespoon of uh, salt. Okay, it's making a big pot of this, that's why. Mm -hmm. um, and don't worry, you don't have to write any of this down. I am going to be, um, you know, typing up the recipe. Yeah. 
Yeah, put in. Yeah, Dave and Sandy right. listening while we drive. I'm so glad. Oh, that's good. Rice. So you can make this using white rice, but mm -hmm. we prefer using brown rice. So we soaked it in the morning and then drained the water. So that's half a cup of brown rice. And we soaked it because we want it to get done at the same time as the rest of all the beans yes. and grains. Otherwise, it would not if you didn't soak it. And this was just soaked a few minutes ago and drained. This is half a cup of uh, green lentils, the moong dal split, and half a cup of uh, quinoa. So that's been just soaked and drained like 10 minutes ago. Okay. We always rinse the quinoa and rinse the beans mm -hmm. like that. Here. Here, I can. Look at that. Okay. Do you um do you blend it up at all or you just mush it we with just, the spoon? Yeah. No, we just give it a stir. stir. Give it a stir and that's it. Right. Okay. And there goes the rice. And now everything is officially in. What's that? What's what? That's the water. That, the white bowl right there. What's the this? Oh, that's, that's for, for serving. Extra, oh, okay. Look at this. This is, heat. this is for extra heat. Look at this. Oh, that's guys. the extra heat. So that's this right. is uh, red chili with Watch some uh, fenugreek. And, uh, that really smells amazing. It's I, really... I said that I thought it smelled sweet, and Jessica said, oh, it's not sweet. <laughs> right? <laughs> Spicy. Spicy. Yeah. Linda, nice to see you. Okay. So four and a half cups of water because we used one and a half cups of total grains and lentils. So the ratio is one to three. For one cup of grains and lentil combined, we use three cups of water because we have one and a half uh, cups. It's four and a half cups. Okay. So don't worry. I'm going to write everything down. Oh, God. That really smells amazing, too. That smells so good. Okay. okay. So she's stirring up everything into the Instant Pot, and then we are going to have a talk about diabetes, type 2 diabetes specifically, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So there goes the Instant Pot, a little more to the right. And how does it go on? We're going to put it for 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Okay. 10 minutes. That's it. I got it on seal. Yep. Okay. All right. So, um, so here's what I want to talk about today. Um, can you give, um, Dr. Patel, can you give our viewers like a really simple overview on how type 2 diabetes happens? Dave, you want to bring his yes, thing I'll bring over? Yes, so, We don't need you to do that. <laughs> The underlying cause of pre-diabetes and type 2 diabetes in particular is insulin resistance. And that's the only technical term you will see me talk about. But if I can describe insulin resistance in one single line, it's the storage of fat in the cells which do not store fat. Storage of fat. In cells that are not meant to store, to store fat. fat. Okay. That's that's one line simple explanation of insulin resistance. So we have special tissue in the body called adipose tissue that is designed to store fat. And that's the only tissue that is designed to store fat. All I never other... I never knew that. And yeah. now it's becoming clear to me why the weight that is around here is so dangerous. It's not meant to store fat. Is that yes. correct? Yes. <gasps> oh my God. So I when, never you, knew that. when you have fat storage in your liver cells, in your pancreatic cells, in your uh, <laughs> cells around the uh, abdominal organs, uh, it's all ending up at the wrong places. So you don't need it there. And when you start accumulating that over time, you start seeing insulin resistance. And so I have a little schematic diagram here. Uh, I hope people can see that. We'll cut your head off if we get any closer. I there can, you go. I yeah, can you turn can. down. So no, this is. He's going to turn down his height. <laughs> yeah, this is a cell. And this green little things here, if you can see, are insulin receptors that I've drawn. And this eye in a blue is actually the insulin. Trying to get in, right? So insulin okay. binds to the receptor. 
and there are a bunch of enzymes on the inner portion of the insulin receptor inside the cell which are supposed to all happen there's a cascade of chemical reactions that is supposed to happen <clears throat> And that will make these tiny channels called glucose transporters, which are circulating around inside the cell, to go and plug themselves into the cell wall. So those channels will actually allow the glucose to enter the cells. And that's how the glucose is used by the cell, you know, uh, structures to create energy. Now, if there's fat, all over that cell, what happens? So there's going to be some fat deposition, fat droplets in the cell. But when it starts exceeding a certain percentage, it starts affecting this inside cascade of chemical reactions through different DNA pathways and uh, the reactions. They don't happen the way they should be happening. So your body starts sensing that the glucose is not entering into the cell, so the pancreas releases more insulin. With that extra insulin, your cells can somehow get the glucose in. <clears throat> but that process keeps getting worse and worse and worse because guess what? We are not looking at the primary thing which is causing it, is which is build up of fat inside the cells. Where it doesn't belong because yeah. it's not meant to have that. So we reach a point where our cells have become so insulin resistant because of the buildup of fat that in spite of max capacity production of insulin by your body, you can still not get the sugar into the cell. And that's when it starts running outside into the bloodstream running high. And, and that's, that's, that's pre-diabetes in early stages and then type 2 diabetes when it reaches beyond a certain stage. Wow, wow, I never really knew that. So that's the reason why the belly fat is a risk indicator for type 2 diabetes. It's not meant to have all store fat there. Yeah, you and don't so want it's very to, dangerous. You don't want to carry a 30 pound or a 50 pound vest or a hundred pound uh, around your body uh, that doesn't need to be there. Wow. Um, okay, so. That's how it happens. So then what does, so then what does it do to, um, so type 2 diabetics who are taking insulin, what does that do when they're shooting the insulin, injecting? So like I described that, you, you know, don't need more insulin. your insulin resistance is getting worse. So you are injecting more insulin and that higher dose of insulin is, this is insulin on top of what your body is making. So that extra insulin that you're injecting is helping you compensate or circumvent that insulin resistance to a certain extent. But again, what is happening is if you don't change on what you're eating and you keep eating the processed foods and the soda and the refined foods and animal foods, which are loaded with fat and animal protein, you're making the process of insulin resistance worse and worse. Even if you have so, more and more insulin. So you may start with 20 units of insulin a day and things may be fine for six months, a year, but then you will start noticing your sugars are starting to creep up right. and your doctor tells you to increase the insulin. So now there is more insulin which converts the junk food you're eating into more fat, which keeps worsening the process. So on one hand, you are having to take more insulin and on the other hand, your same insulin that you take is converting the junk and processed foods you eat into more fat inside the cell. So eating the same way, you're never going to come off insulin. You're going to keep needing more and more it's and more It gets insulin. progressively worse. You're not really curing your diabetes. It just gets worse and worse and worse. But if you change the way you eat, and you start eating more fiber rich foods like fruits, vegetables, beans, and whole grains, you are now working on reducing the fat buildup in the cells because all those four foods I mentioned are naturally lower in fat. They're not zero fats, but they're lower in fat. And that helps to start cleaning up the cell. So now you start needing less and less insulin. I've had patients who within four or five days of going whole food plant-based yeah. can start having to cut back on their amount of Like insulin. Big Steve, we did a cook, chat, and chow down just a week ago with Big Steve and his insulin is more than cut in half 
and um, he's already lost 42 pounds and his cholesterol is normal and his blood pressure is way down and he is never going back he said yeah 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 once you you once you taste the pudding you know no, no pun intended <laughs> You're not going to go back to the previous ways for the most part. All right. So has anybody had any aha moments here? So um, Florence, to your point, Florence is saying the person who needs to hear this won't ever listen. Well, that's not true because people are listening, right? But you did ask a question on um you did ask a question in the group on the thread and we are going to be answering some of those questions um, very shortly. So um, let's see who else. Anybody else? So I had a giant aha moment because I never knew. I'm just going to repeat it. I never knew that the whole reason for insulin resistance was because those cells were not meant to store the fat. I did not know that. And now it makes perfect sense why it's a risk factor. And I knew it, but I, I that term, that sentence that, you know, insulin yeah. resistance is basically storage of fat in places where it doesn't need to be. I, I, I borrowed it from John. Our friend John, the health coach. John Van Vlardigan. Yes. <laughs> so I like that line. So I that. John Van Vlardigan. Right. Um, that that just makes it so incredibly clear. So I hope that you guys have had some aha moments. Nikayla says this was extremely informative to me as a type two diabetic. Thank you for making it so simple to understand. See, people Thank you. just. People just want to know what it is. So how many more minutes we got going on this thing? Okay, so it's still heating up. Okay, so um, if anybody has, so I have some questions that you guys all asked um, in a thread when I said, hey, who wants to have a cook chat and chat out with Dr. Patel? And you guys were like, yes, yes, yes. So um, I have five questions that you guys asked, but feel free to type any other questions into the comments. I'm looking at everything you guys are saying, and, you know, we'll get to those. Okay, so um, I think we might have answered this one. David asked, right? You're the yeah, one who wanted to know. He said, why is fat bad, and how does it cause type 2 diabetes? I think we just had that explanation. Yeah. It's fat. What is it? What's that sentence? Fat stored in places Says, which are not designed to store, store fat. fat. Right, and it causes the insulin to not be able to work to let the glucose in the cell, and that's insulin resistance. So that's the answer to that. Okay, so Linda asked, what do you want every pre-diabetic or diabetic to know? If you could just have one thing yeah. to tell everybody. So the one thing, the take-home message is that if you take, control of your lifestyle and make the corrective changes on your nutrition, the sleep, the stress, the activity, then you can potentially reverse type 2 diabetes, come off all your medications. And if you're pre-diabetic, then you can also reverse pre-diabetes and go back to eating more food that is more tastier, food, yeah. healthier, and not having to count portions and count calories and, and be restricted. But what you're actually watching is what type of food you eat, not the amount. How do you like that? Not worrying about counting carbs, counting calories, looking at how much is on your plate. You don't have to worry about any of that, right? And why is that? Because the food is... Because the whole plant foods, which is beans, vegetables, whole grains, and fruits, are naturally high in fiber. And, and low in fat. And relatively low in fat. And they also have lots of phytochemicals. Uh, phyto means plants. So there are lots of chemicals that we get from different fruits, vegetables, beans, and whole grains, which are all uh, protective against uh, our body in some or other manner. So the fiber and the phytochemicals together really slow down the absorption of sugar into the bloodstream. So you're getting a very gradual release because of the breakdown, it takes time because of the fiber and uh, it makes it very even. And the other benefit is all that fiber you're eating is food for the good bacteria in your gut. We carry more than 100 yeah. trillion bacteria called gut microbiome from one end to the other end. And if those are not the right kind and not healthy, mm -hmm. we are not going to be healthy. 
Yeah. So if we provide them the food, which is the fiber, they can break it down into something that's also good for us. And right. it's a win-win. So right, you're right. you're not just nourishing your body, but you're nourishing your microbiome, you're which done. is going to keep you healthy. So uh, the short answer to that is that pre-diabetes and type 2 diabetes can be reversed. Yes. Okay. With case to case, it varies, but there is a very high... Probability, probability like what Steve is doing yes right um, so um, with a with a whole food plant-based diet and other lifestyle changes as you go right so um, I actually like to say whole food plant-based lifestyle because lifestyle. it's not a diet it's not something you're gonna do for two months or three months you're making a change that's gonna stay permanent so you may adapt it slowly which is fine uh, you may want to adapt it faster if you're really in a very uh, advanced process of disease. Right. But the key is to adapt and consolidate the change and then keep working more on it. It's not about going yo-yo. So um, in terms of lifestyle, like, don't you find that maybe you'll, you might start cooking more and you might start taking more time at shopping and looking at labels or gardening and growing vegetables and herbs or joining a community garden mm -hmm. or walking more outside, doing more? Like, what else about the lifestyle? So there are six pillars of the lifestyle, uh, evidence-based lifestyle medicine. Oh, that, yeah. So there is nutrition, which is whole food plant-based. There is uh, activity, uh, doesn't have to be anything elaborate, some form of activity, some form of sport or anything that you like that you're getting out of the couch and doing something yeah. for 20, 30 minutes every day, uh, getting good quality sleep, getting, uh, uh, you know, working on reducing stress. Uh, we all have stress in our lives. But how we handle or respond to that stress makes the difference. Yeah. And uh, working on avoiding toxins. We are surrounded with toxins in our environment, in our food, water, That's indoor so air, good. in our, you know, plastic. So there are lots of toxins. So working on avoiding them as much as you can. Again, not going bonkers because you can really become OCD there. But trying to do the most you can and then working on detoxing by different uh, whole plant foods. You can add green smoothies. Uh, I think we can do the next video on green smoothies. Yes, yes we can. Uh, which yes, are really powerful, uh, you know, four, six ounces of liquid in relationships. That's the last, but also very important. If you have a old wound from a, uh, a prior uh, relationship or any existing relationship which has been really sore, uh, you want to make an effort to, again, I'm not a counselor, I'm not trying to make any <laughs> advice here, but you want to do an effort. Well, this is the evidence-based. This yes, is an evidence-based. At base. least on your end yeah. to get some reconciliation and, and forgiveness. Forgiveness and, and gratitude are two very important qualities, not just to have them as an abstract qualities, but they're equally good for our body. When we have a sense of forgiveness and gratitude, it actually starts improving our brain function. It lowers our cortisol. Uh, there are lots and lots of benefits. So I've seen people who may be working on their activity. They have good sleep. They have good nutrition, but their stress and relationships have not been focused on. And in spite of doing all those three things right, they may still end up with disease. And yeah. uh, we don't need that. So working um, on all the six aspects is important, <clears throat> but not being overwhelmed is the key. You want to identify small changes in each aspect and then work on them. <clears throat> so um, I, I can totally relate to that because I had breast cancer. Um, well, I had breast cancer in 2014 after something sort of traumatic happened with one of my kids. And I was yeah. really angry, really angry about it. And, um, and also I'm adopted. And so I had anger to my birth mother. Like, why did she do like my, like a child grows up just with that. Like yeah. I'm not good enough. And why did so it was a constant that? wound, a mental wound, a yeah. soul wound. And they, a soul wound. And they say that, um, breast cancer is a disease of the heart chakra for that same reason, yeah. that wound. 
and that when it's in the left breast, it has to do with mothers and mothering. And in the right breast, it has to do with um, relationships like the I marriage. See. That's something new for me. Yeah. And so um, in the book, Radical Remission, Dr. Kelly Turner, she studied, um, she studied cases of radical remission mm -hmm. where stage four cancer patients had a terminal diagnosis and then they came back and the tumors had regressed or disappeared. And she decided to study those cases to find out what were the common yeah. factors and releasing negative emotions and finding forgiveness was, she found nine common factors out of 75. And when I read that book and saw that I could do these nine things yeah. because they're all lifestyle things. And one of them was those things I, I worked on healing those two wounds. And I feel that that made a giant mm -hmm. difference. That's, that's so, so, so. true. So, you know, we, we tend to blame our uh, genes or our, uh, hereditary, uh, you know, diseases, but actually there is a lot more in our control. Like I just, you know, talked through yeah. the six uh, phases or six pillars of lifestyle that if you can work on those six, <clears throat> uh, you can control 90% or close to 90% of diseases from happening. So, um, so Dr. Patel and I and David and Jessica and several more practitioners are putting on a, re a retreat August 2nd through 4th at Goldhead Branch State Park. And the whole retreat is based around this idea of those six pillars, which also jives with Dr. Dean Ornish's research um, and his whole protocol called Undo It, which is, yeah. his is four pillars. This includes two more. And um, so we're going to talk more about that when we eat because dr patel is going to be doing something really cool with those six pillars with a group at this retreat so i'm so glad that you brought that up so let's see what's going on over here um oh so before we go on to any other questions um the thing about type type 2 diabetics and what do you wish every pre-diabetic and diabetic know knew um which is that it can be reversed is that that's what you do in your practice, right? He is a preventive endocrinologist, so which means I, I what? So I think the logo is not clear here, but this is my clinic logo. It <laughs> says Center for Preventive Endocrinology and Nutrition. Tell us what does that mean? And so uh, we came up with this uh, name for the clinic because I focus a lot on prevention. Endocrinology, we see you know all kinds of hormones and all the research we have. It's all amazing, and I have all you know, nothing but gratitude for all the researchers and scientists who have, you know, found out all that. But the huge burden of chronic diseases we see today mm -hmm. is from lifestyle. So all that uh, research is there, but lifestyle is the biggest factor that you can that, control, that we control and that we can actually change the expression of genes. You may have bad genes, but you can actually change the mm -hmm. outcome depending on how you live your life. Right. So I am uh, focused on lifestyle medicine uh, and I'm a board certified endocrinologist. Uh, I'm also taking up my lifestyle medicine boards later this year. Um, so <laughs> my focus- It's your uh, dinner, not your DNA. <laughs> yeah, thank you. My focus is <laughs> to work with you if you're willing to work with me <laughs> to get you off medications uh, in a safe manner, not just saying you can stop everything and you end up in trouble, but and I always uh, say that a very monitored approach yeah, and working to, with somebody yeah. who can help you taper down off of those medications as you change your lifestyle. That is a big deal. Yeah. So my clinic is located in Wesley Chapel. Uh, and for those of you who are local to the Tampa area, um, that's for you. We have a global group here, but yeah. there, but a lot of my followers are, are local people. Sure. Yeah. Um, so that is a big deal. Okay, let's see what people are saying. Patty is saying something that is one of the questions we had, the same question. June also asked this question. Can a whole food plant-based diet reverse type one, type 1 diabetes? So what's happening with type 1 diabetes? So type 1 diabetes, uh, your pancreas has uh, been destroyed, uh, the portion where it makes uh, insulin. There are lots of different cells in pancreas and they all make different types of uh, hormones and enzymes, but the, the beta cells that make insulin 
have been destroyed completely. So unfortunately, you cannot reverse type <clears throat> 1 diabetes, but. but there is still a very good silver lining there. So my experience and also experience of other physicians that I've connected with, when you go on a whole food plant-based lifestyle, uh, even for type 1 diabetes, you start needing less insulin than what wow. you were needing before. So Your blood sugars insulin. are more steady. You sleep better. You may have gained some weight over the years. You start losing that excess weight. And the reason all that has happened in spite of you not having insulin is because you developed secondary insulin resistance on top on of. top of the insulin deficiency. So you have a double oh. whammy. You don't have insulin, so you need insulin. But the insulin you take is not working as it should, and you're needing to take more and more over years. Oh my goodness! So, like so, you can reverse type one diabetes, uh, type two diabetes, uh, insulin resistance yeah. with whole food plant based. You can also reverse that extra insulin resistance portion with whole food plant based, and go down to needing the least amount of insulin and get the best health outcomes. So it cannot be reversed, but it can be markedly improved in symptoms and in the amount of medication that you would need. And you can eat a lot more carbohydrates, as they that call you it. Thought, that you thought you could eat. That's and, one of my questions. And not have to uh, you know, worry about sugars going up. Uh, so I have had patients who eat anywhere from 300 to 600 grams of carbohydrates, but they're coming in complex forms from... Yeah. Wait, wait, uh, that's another question. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, Patty and June, does that make sense about your question about type 1 diabetes? Type in the comments and let me know that makes sense. All right, Vin is asking, I read that if you need to have sugar, that date sugar is the best to have as it is simply a powdered whole food. So if it's just uh, powdered dates, then that's better than uh, refined sugar made from cane, uh, sugar cane, or or you could make sugar. my oat granola with dates and. Or oats. the <laughs> even better version is to actually just eat the whole dates. Now, if you do need to sweet it up, uh, a sweet up a dish, then uh, what you can do is uh, soak some dates in water and then just blend it. Well, that's what uh, my raw nola yeah. is, but and it's not soaked. It's a crumble, so that yeah. it's a sprinkle. You sprinkle it yeah. on. But if you need something dates. in a liquid form, then you, then can, you keep can keep the date paste right. in the refrigerator. I've also used coconut sugar, which is a little lower on the... Uh, coconut sugar, is it has more sucrose. I thought, too, that coconut oh, okay. sugar is also mm -hmm. uh, better. But it actually, it's like agave. It still same causes thing. The same All right. Spice. So raw nola sprinkle, y'all, and dates. Okay, good question, Dan. Um, Angie is saying this is amazing. Rosanna says, love that. Forgiveness and gratitude working on our spirit is so important. Yeah. That's it's mind, body, spirit. Mind, body, spirit. Definitely. Um, curious to know what type one and a half means. Mm -hmm. Was there a type one and yeah, a half? Yeah, there was on there. So uh, Type 1 and half diabetes, uh, <laughs> we call That's it funny. the LADA or latent autoimmune diabetes of adulthood. A long name we abbreviate as LADA or type 1 and half diabetes. Is, it's in between type 1 and type 2. So type uh, 1, you don't make any insulin. Type 2, you make insulin, but there is resistance. So eventually that insulin doesn't work. Uh, type type one. 1 and half actually is diagnosed somewhere in the third, fourth, or fifth decade of life. And the defect is still that you're not making insulin, mm -hmm. like with type 1. Mm -hmm. But the difference is that it's not complete destruction of the beta cells. Oh, okay. You still have a few beta cells in the pancreas left that still make a little bit of insulin. Mm -hmm. And because of that, you don't end up in the ketoacidosis state like okay. you would with a type 1 type. diabetic. Oh, okay. And But because they're in the third, fourth, fifth decade of life, they are diagnosed as a type 2. But they don't work like a type 2. Oh. So they're put on metformin or glipizide or some oral medication. And their sugars may improve some, but they're still running in the 2 and 300s. Oh, my goodness. And they are losing weight because... Insulin is very essential for life. Mm -hmm. If we don't have any insulin, we are not going to conserve energy in body and we're going to lose weight. Okay. So they're losing weight. They're not as uh, overweight. Uh, they're more muscular and they're still labeled as type 2. 
and their sugars are still high on oral medications. So, uh, so within a year or two, they end up being okay. put on insulin. And the second mistake that happens there is because they've been diagnosed as type 2 mm -hmm. incorrectly, they're put on insulin doses which are on a higher range than a yeah. type 1 diabetic. And it doesn't have the same effect. No, no, it has. They're very insulin sensitive. They're not resistant at that stage. So when you put a insulin sensitive person on, let's say, 30 units of insulin from the start, which would be fine for a res insulin resistant person, like a type 2 diabetic. But if you use that same dose starting for a type 1 and half, they end up with low blood sugar. Oh boy. And so they're so, so, so jittered up by a severe episode of hypoglycemia that they're scared of insulin, which they really need because they're not making enough, but they don't need a lot. They just need a little bit like a type 1 diabetic. Okay. Wow. Good question. Good question, Nikayla. She, she, she really could see and liked yeah. your diagram. That was very good. Um, okay, Patty says that makes sense, and Vin says that makes sense. Okay, now this is something. So, is that ready? Oh, do we let it? Do we, we do to wait it, for a natural release? release yeah, yeah, or we can release it. It's up to you. We can do the questions. Yeah. We usually let it simmer why, yeah. so that moisture. Why don't cook. you get done with all the questions, okay. and then by that time, all right. it should be good. So, you were about to start in on this question. So, Florence asked. How do you answer diabetics who say they can't have potatoes or rice or fruit, those who are counting carbs? Let's go through that again. Why so can they have it? So yeah. uh, mentioning earlier, the fiber and the phytochemicals, those two things in the whole plant foods really uh, help slow down the release of sugar into the bloodstream. So because of that gradual release, your body doesn't need all the insulin in one time. Mm -hmm. And because you don't need as much insulin, you're not getting that blood sugar fluctuation and uh, you can go away from carb counting and portion control if you're eating the right kind of foods. Now, for a type 1 diabetic, they may still need insulin, but they still need less and less right. amounts. When so they can eat. Foods. So they can eat this. So stuff. that's what I was going for earlier. Yeah. Was you know I have patients with type one diabetes who eat anywhere from three hundred to six hundred grams of complex carbohydrates coming from these whole plant foods, and they're barely needing twenty five to thirty units of insulin a day. So their insulin carb wow. ratios are very high, which is good. Higher the ratio means you're needing less mm -hmm. insulin. So these whole plant foods that are high in um, unrefined carbohydrates like potato, rice, and fruit are also high in fiber, which slows down the release of the sugars, and they're high in vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and, and they're very nutrient-dense mm -hmm. with being very low fat. So a couple caveats that I would like to mention is if you're looking at potatoes, the white potato is a little more... Uh, glycemically high because it has lesser fiber. So try to choose uh, the purple or the sweet. yams or the yams. sweet ye yellow orange sweet potatoes which are high in fiber. And same with rice. You know, if you're using <clears throat> rice, uh, brown rice because of the fiber content, right, is a lot better in terms of blood sugar absorption. Uh, now, once you have reversed it completely, if you had a little bit of white rice uh, once in a while, it's not going to be a problem. Yeah. But while you're trying to work on healing and reversal, you want to avoid uh, refined or processed uh, versions of grains. Or Yeah. Okay. Um, so Florence wanted a comeback for those people. She says she runs into these people all the time and does not have a good one sentence line about that. Yeah. One sentence. One sentence. Maybe we'll work on that and we'll yeah. put it in the comments. How about so, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's we'll work on a good yeah, comeback yeah. for you. Okay, Florence, because that's a really good point. And obviously, you're not a doctor. You're not going to explain this whole thing, right? So, um, so Elena has a great, great question. What about if you don't have diabetes but you are overweight? What is it when somebody's really, really overweight but they're not very sick? What is that? What's going on inside? So we were having this discussion just a few minutes earlier. So there's actually a, a term described as metabolically healthy obese, M-H-O. Yeah. 
And scientists and researchers, physicians were also scratching their head a few years ago because we were finding people who were obese or overweight and they were not seeing the type of disease that you would expect, you know, with their blood pressure or cholesterol, sugars. Uh, they were not manifesting any of those usual uh, things. And so they studied them and they followed their health parameters and all that for 10 years. And what they found was that by 10 years, you may start out as someone who is overweight or obese and doesn't have any disease process that is very evident. But at, at the 10 year mark, which could be two years, four years, six, eight or 10 years for depending on the person, majority of those people at 10 years ended up with metabolic syndrome. So yeah. high blood sugars, high cholesterol, high blood, uh, blood pressure, so, cancer. Right. cancer. So, um, so, um, so, so that, that research was pretty clear that so, even if you, if you don't have it now, that that excess weight is causing negative things. So don't take it as a, as a, as a, you know, thing that, okay, it doesn't affect you. So you can uh, stay at that weight because it's a constant ticking time bomb. You don't know when it's going to set off. You don't know when. It's going to set up yeah. in year, two years or 10 years, but, uh, you want to just nip the butt out of that. Yeah, you don't want to wonder when it's going to be because it could be tomorrow. Um, I never heard that term meta, meta, metabolically healthy obese because it sounds like a contradiction, <laughs> doesn't it? It does. And I, I have come across lots of people who say, well, my doctor says I'm, I don't need to lose the weight or I don't take any medications. And they could be 100 pounds overweight, but the truth is, it's a ticking time bomb and you just don't know when. Yeah, and, and many times most of the labs that are routinely done may not necessarily look at inflammation. So, you know, routinely oh, high sensitivity special... CRP or yeah. those kind of labs are yeah. not tested. So if you're just looking at A1C or, you know, just blood counts and things like that, you may not see disease show up. Oh, there. so you're saying C-reactive protein will show a disease yeah, progression. Yeah, C-reactive protein will show inflammation, presence oh, of inflammation. Okay. So if you are not seeing disease, but if your C-reactive protein is 5 or 6 or 10, mm -hmm. it's just disease waiting to happen. And what were you saying about um, obesity and cancer? You were saying So something. even if you don't have the high blood sugar or the blood uh, cholesterol or high blood pressure, just having extra weight is an independent risk factor for getting cancer. How much extra weight? Um, anything, pounds? anything that is not supposed to be there, but you start seeing. Oh, you know, like we weight, said before. The weight on the arms or legs may not affect you as much, but the weight in around the belly is a very... What about the weight that's yeah. all here? So different ethnicities have different weight distributions. Indians have more deposition here. Caucasians could be all across the body. But what we also need to understand is it's not just inert fat. All that extra fat deposition is very metabolically active. Metabolically there are, active. There are 600 plus cytokines, which are chemicals and hormones mm -hmm. that the fat cells release. I know it releases estrogen in a woman, which yeah. is dangerous for a breast cancer survivor. And it's also releasing more estrogen or converting more yeah. testosterone into estrogen for men. So they're at, more risk, of, <laughs> they're at more risk of uh, prostate cancer. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, wow. if you're obese, you're having more conversion of testosterone into estrogen in your fat cells. For a man? Yes, and the higher the estrogen level, every man is going to have a little bit yeah. of estrogen, but when that level starts skewing more towards estrogen and less testosterone, it's not the testosterone going down, but it's the estrogen, estrogen. level going up, which is going to promote more prostate cancer growth. Wow, I did not know that. I, I did know that obesity is a risk factor for cancer, but I didn't really know yeah. why. And you're saying there's 600 different 600 plus chemicals. So it's not reactions. just inert fat sitting in your body. It's 600 plus it's chemicals. Acting. And you want to have, get, you know, get rid of that as soon and as safely as possible. Uh, yeah. And people go into, you know, different uh, aspects like liposuction and, yeah. you know, removing fats. Work? And so it may get rid of that on an immediate basis, but if you're still not correcting your lifestyle, lifestyle. you're going to build that back. Wow. Um, 
Okay, let's see what's going on. The, I have had several aha moments here, my goodness. Um, Judy yeah. says, being overweight catches up with you. Nikayla is saying, there we go. Nikayla is saying, Nikayla is saying, that sounds like what's happening with my sister. I'm glad you discussed this. And Judy says, sounds just like me, obese and was healthy until I wasn't. Yeah, yeah. You're healthy until all of a sudden there's an event. It, it, yeah. To give a simple analogy, it's like the tip of the iceberg thing. Oh, the iceberg's so, on the top of the water. So but you may see something on the top, but there's a lot more under the water. And if it's just seeing a little bit on the top and yeah. thinking that it's, it's just little and yeah, we are fine, you're missing out on the whole... Uh, What's going on there. underneath, you just don't realize. Don Golden is saying, what was that test you mentioned, the C-reactive protein? So there, there is a C-reactive protein, and then there is a more sensitive version of it called the high sensitivity, so HSCRP. Yeah. It, say it again. What is it? High sensitivity. HSCRP. CRP. So high you sensitivity C-reactive You want to keep it below one. Below one. Okay. Uh, Don is saying, can a whole food plant-based lifestyle improve low testosterone? So many times, uh, low testosterone is also happening because of excess weight, which is actively converting the testosterone into estrogen. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, that's one aspect. The second aspect is uh, all the sex hormones, testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, are circulating in the body bound with a protein called SHBG. Okay. And that protein binds and carries almost close to 98% of all those hormones. Wow. So only 2% is the one that's freely available to the tissues. Mm -hmm. So when you're checking testosterone, you're usually checking total levels. A free is also checked, but mostly it's total testosterone. Yeah. And that's going to be low, but your free may be normal because your liver's ability to make SHBG goes down when you build up more fat. So that fat is not So good when you for get rid of either. the fat, the liver's ability to make SHBG comes up, so your total testosterone levels comes up too. And secondly, because you're not having excess fat, you're having less conversion of testosterone into estrogen. Estrogen, what you just explained. Does that does that answer your question, Don? So uh, so yes, a whole food plant-based lifestyle can improve low testosterone and no. also blockages in that area. And, and, and yes. <laughs> It's not just a test a low T problem, it's a plumbing problem for all the men out there. Yeah. Uh, I see men uh, with uh, those issues and uh, it's not just testosterone because I've had uh, men who Would have like been on, on testosterone shots or uh, gels and the levels are up in the nine and 900 and 1000 range, but they still don't get any benefit uh, in the bedroom because it's not just a testosterone issue, it's also a plumbing issue. Where's the yogurt? Oh, okay. okay. So it's a plumbing issue, keep going. So uh, what I was going to mention is there is one food which can actually prevent to a large extent the conversion of testosterone into estrogen. Tell. And that's one food. mushrooms. Mushroom. mushrooms. All mushrooms? All different types of mushrooms have these uh, chemicals in them which prevents that conversion. What is happening over here? The key is to make sure you cook them, either saute them or, or cook, put it in a soup or some kind of stew. Show don't us eat, what you're doing there. Don't eat them raw. Whoa, it's happening. It's happening. Um, don't eat them raw. What happens if you eat them raw? You don't there's think that's a, There's a particular uh, compound called quercetin. <laughs> Sorry, right on to that. <laughs> uh, which, uh, which is, uh, sorry, I was going to mess up your laptop there. Uh, which, I said uh, anything goes. I can say that. <laughs> which, uh, that particular compound is a little toxic. So if you heat it up a little bit okay. or saute it or put it in a soup okay. or stew, it kills that particular, deactivates that right. particular toxin and then everything else is just good. And, and that does what? It has quercetin, which helps what? No, that's the toxic component. Oh, so we need to deactivate it. 
it deactivates it, which helps what? Because I was going in the fridge when you said it. We don't need that toxin in the in our food, in the right. mushrooms. So that's the purpose of not eating it raw. No, no, you said there's one food that helps. So mushrooms have also all have chemicals which block that enzyme which converts testosterone into estrogen. Oh, okay, I got it. Can so you if you can that? block that conversion, you can have a higher testosterone levels and not have high estrogen. So mushrooms, guys, mushrooms. All right. And don't, so uh, just don't go out in the wild and start picking out your own <laughs> mushrooms because many of the mushrooms are also poisonous <laughs> and you can die. So. All right, so let's buy the ones over. from the market. Uh, there is uh, Baby Bella, there is Cotobella mushrooms, there is Shiitake mushrooms. So any kind. There is Rishi mushrooms. You want to get a spoon? Just There's spoons here. This. I have all the spoons right no, here. No, to stir this. this needs no, you to be don't stirred. stir it. Okay. So you're going to take a scoop and take it out. Oh, okay. Don't all right, don't stir it. Um, so we are serving this. Um, you guys, you might know that in typical Indian households in India, there is a lot of dairy right. being served, a lot of dairy. And so, um, and it goes great with the, the heat of the spices and everything. So we've got Kite Hill yogurt, which is um, very simply made with almonds. It's, it's one of the lowest um, amount of ingredients in any of the yogurts and it has no added sugar. And so we're gonna be using that on our food today. Let's look at the. We even make yogurt at home, but that's a little more uh, longer recipe. So for so, ease, this is this is your answer. You can even make it at home if you have the time. Yeah, um, but if you are struggling with weight loss and you want to overcome obesity and overweight, adding this to your food on a daily basis is not recommended because it is one hundred percent fat. Calories, 110. Calories from fat, 110. 100% yeah. fat. Now, Dr. Patel does not have that problem. So, <laughs> so, so that's going to be fine. And then we also have this amazing hot pepper that's happening. So I'm going to turn us around, and then we're going to continue answering questions and chowing down. All right? You guys ready? You take this. You take this. And we all are gonna all gonna need some water probably. Am I right? Uh we'll be good. Yeah, let me fill up the jar. Okay, filling up the jar. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna turn you around. Here we go. I think we can come down off the top of that. There you go. Are we in? Yeah, you're in. You got everybody in the screen. Come on, have a seat. We are in. <clears throat> okay. Let's see if we can get some light on us. Yeah, maybe. I don't know why. Uh, it's time to just, uh, okay. So um, I'm pretty excited about this. Oh, I'm going to let close. Should I turn around this one? Maybe as well. Yeah. Is it better? Okay. Yeah, that That's is better. better. Yep. That is definitely better. So, um, so let's keep going with the questions while we just chow down. Here you go. Here's the yogurt. No, I don't drink water while eating. I'm a little so nervous about that. If you drink a lot of water while eating, then you dilute the digestive juices. So you want to either drink water 20, 30 minutes before right. or an hour after. Good to know. During the meal. Good to know. Because the reason I took the water is in case I got spiced. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's see who's asking questions here. Don, did that answer your questions? I thought that was like an aha moment of question of, of answers. Yeah. All right. Elena is saying, how do you lose weight on a plant-based diet? So That's when you're easy. eating foods which are naturally high in nutrients and high in fiber, and low in calories naturally <laughs> you're not having to count portions you eat enough uh, uh, you know filling meals you gotta try this it's and you're still eating less calories without counting for it so you right. naturally lose weight and if you add a little Easily bit of a, and deliciously and if you isn't add a little bit of activity or exercise then it really makes it even faster isn't that what this is about i wish i could really show how good this looks why can't i get some light on this um, oh, this is just amazing and 
the um, the yogurt makes it so creamy. I've barely had yogurt in five years. I'm telling you the truth. Wow. Okay. So, um, did that answer your question, Elena? Nikayla says yes. I have lost 16 pounds in two months doing whole food plant based. Terrific, Nikayla. Yeah. That is great news. That is really great. Okay. Um, it just seems to come right off. Yes, it does. Judy says, yes, Elena, I agree with Nikayla. I've lost 60 pounds and still have more to go. And Judy is doing amazing. You heard her stand up and talk. Yeah. Um, yeah no, she was, uh, she was a little shy telling her story. So you're like, no, you have to tell your story. Yeah, you have to tell your story. Everybody in, in this group, everybody on our live stream tonight when you tell your story your success story you let other people know that they can do this too and it's so important for people to learn that they can do this and that's what dr patel said that he wishes every pre-diabetic and diabetic would know is that this condition can be reversed of type 2 diabetes you have power in your hands more you than have what you think you have the power yeah oh we had a whole bunch of people join while we were talking over there all right, Elena says, thank you. Dan Boyle says, surprisingly. Hey, Dan is here. Hey, Dan. Dan is here. Hey, Dan. Hey, Dan. Hey, Dan. Hey, Dan. Dan. Is Becky there, too? Where's Becky? She Where's Becky there? at? Get Becky yeah. on here. Surprisingly, Dr. Greger revealed that white button mushrooms are the healthiest and most nutrition nutritious of mushrooms. I did not know that. Aha moment. It's like yeah. the fourth one. <laughs> Very good, Dan. Get Becky on here. Nikayla says, I didn't know that about the water. Yeah. Yeah, that's more from the naturopathic and Ayurvedic way of eating. Mm -hmm. So you want to drink water at normal room temperature. And you want to drink it either 20 minutes before the meal, so the water is already processed through. Or wait an hour after the meal. I mean, you can clean your mouth and... Mm -hmm. Drink a little sip, but don't load yourself up with water. Because it dilutes the digestive enzymes. Is that right? Did I get it yes. right? Okay. Wow. We are learning a ton. Vince, Don says, what are you eating? So we are eating a dish called... Kichari. Kichari. Here are my kids. And so I it's made there. Own, <laughs> I don't need anyone to serve me. I can get my own. <laughs> yes, I'm so used to it. <laughs> Um, no, that's okay. This is Kichari. At the beginning of the video, um, we showed Dr. Patel making this, and we showed all the ingredients so that when we get off of here, you'll be able to go back to the beginning and look at it. And also, I will um, pub write up tomorrow and publish the recipe with photos, and um, we will definitely put it all on there. It's made with um, moong dal and quinoa and rice and vegetables, any potatoes that you want to put in there. Eggplant. Eggplant, all the things. Anything you have in the fridge, you just shove in there and then you eat it. And that's, yeah. The best thing about a whole food plant-based diet is that you can eat as much as you want and it doesn't matter. You just said it second there, there's, there's nothing wrong with this. I can eat this now and I'll eat it again, it's no big deal. Did you, you guys keep anything see on. Did you guys see when we were at when we were at Big Steve? You did not see this. When we were when I was at Big Steve's last mm -hmm. week, he we we had black bean burgers and oven fries, homemade black bean burgers that we made, three ingredients, and oven fries, right? No oil, no nothing, right? So you know, me and his wife are you know eating and eating, and he went for a second one, and it was on Dave's Killer Bread, and they were literally this out like this, mm -hmm. and he went for a second one. But he's still losing eight pounds a month reliably, and his meds are coming down, and he's losing right. weight. Yes. So, th and he said that this was a drastic reduction in the amount that he was eating of animal products. He was eating like just giant amounts of food before. So, um, well, yeah, it's an example of how the food, that type of food, works on the inside. I can tell you from my experience with type one diabetics, not just type two, but type one. Within a few days, yeah. not a week or a month, just two, three days, if they start going all over plant based, mm -hmm. they have to start cutting back on their insulin. So, that quote that I put on the visual review in the group that was about the study about the two weeks, 
No, that's that's for type two diabetics. Oh, you're what saying. What I'm mentioning is about type one. Oh, okay. have added insulin resistance on mm -hmm. top of non muscle right. insulin. So within a few days of eating this way, they start having their, their sugar goes low if they mm -hmm. take the same dose of insulin. So they have to start cutting back. Wow. They're not going to come off, but they are reducing the amount of insulin mm -hmm. by like 40, 50 percent. Because we're talking about type one diabetes. Okay. Vin said, it's good. I'm full for you. <laughs> it's making mm -hmm. me hungry. And it's not too spicy. It's just right. Oh, the right put some more of this on. No, it's just right for me. <laughs> right. It's just right for me. I think it's it would a be because they cut it down, <laughs> but it's just right the way it is for me to taste. I really like it. Oh, like it. <clears throat> Becky is here on Dan's thing. Hi, uh -huh. Becky. Hey, Becky. Yay, Becky. <laughs> Judy says, I've been drinking room temperature water for years. Well, Judy has known a lot more than a lot of all of us. Really? Years. Um, same, same. Elise is on. Yay. Hey, hey. Ava, nice to see you. Okay. So. We answered that question. We answered that question. <clears throat> and then somebody else, Cynthia, in the group earlier this week, she asked the question. And I wonder so if you guys one. you guys already know the answer to this. You don't have to, to sit on this side. That's why. <laughs> oh, is that it? No, yeah. It's fabulous um, right here. Round two happening for all of us. This is delicious. Mm. <laughs> right, Dave? Right, 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 yes, good. we love it. We love it. Um, I'm so glad that Dr. Patel is such a great cook. <laughs> yeah, right? He's such a great cook. He is. He's going to start cooking from tomorrow now, every day. Right? Mm. <laughs> well, practice makes progress, you know. Exactly. got to get to it. Do you know that Steve said, actually, um, his wife Rosemary said that that all the things he was asking her to make, it, it was a lot of cooking and that he should come in there and start cooking with her. And so he did. And so when we were on the live stream together, mm -hmm. Steve did all the French fries and everything. Oh, wow. Like he cut everything. He did all the spices. And he was going like this. He's going like that. And um, she was saying how he's taking a more active role in the kitchen. And I think this is an example of that whole lifestyle change. Yeah. You yeah. don't just sit back you're and finding, go drive through. It's, you take you're you're finding away. the joy in things which you thought were boring before that you never realize. But once you realize what it's doing on the inside, you're all of a sudden, and how delicious it is, all of a sudden you like want to get in there and start cooking stuff, right? Um, all right, so this last question, I bet you guys are gonna all know the answer to it now that we've had this talk, okay? Cynthia asked, how can you change your pre-diabetes status? By working on your nutrition. First of all. Activity, stress, mm -hmm. sleep. It starts with nutrition and it ends with your whole lifestyle. Mm -hmm. it, the, the, the main thing to understand is that you have more power in your hands than your genes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so don't don't push it back or, or say it's, it's in your family. You can really change the expression of the genes by how you live your lifestyle. So... um. One lady who was on this live stream earlier, it's been going for an hour, so I don't know if she's still on. Her name is Rosanna. And when she first met me, she had a pre-diabetes diagnosis and she reversed it in about four months and her cholesterol came down and her wow. blood pressure came down. And then she never had to worry about it again. The doctor yeah. tested her A1C and said, oh, it's all normal. You're done here. <laughs> and that was the end of it. And she kept this whole food plant-based way of no oil way of eating and she never had to revisit that again and the thing is that once you have reversed it <clears throat> uh, let's say you were out or you were with friends and you ate something that was not necessarily whole food plant-based mm -hmm. one meal maybe you know once a month or a couple times a month is not gonna mess things up you some more? Yeah. sure you're actually gonna see the bad effects of that one meal bad meaning you know you don't really feel much good after eating that you might feel sick actually so bad in that terms but it's one good. or two meals a month is not gonna you know derail your health but the more experiences you have like that you will eventually either you know plan better or maybe eat before you go out or you know pick on things that you can whole food plant based wise and just you know be more comfortable the key aspect 
is to when you're adopting these changes to not do them with stress in your mind because if you're stressing about it you're defeating the purpose because high cortisol is gonna yeah is you gonna can have any yeah would you like him to come out and have some i asked him but he's waiting on um his mom, mom. mom. Yeah. okay okay so she, i think she's almost here okay yeah. um so um so that's a good point so um so all of these things let's just see if there's any more hold questions. on a second I, I there's one interesting thing every doctor that we've sent in the, the plant-based nutrition movement and mm -hmm. the people that we've seen at all of our talks and all things mm -hmm. they always talk about sleep and they always talk about you got to get at least eight so between the sweet spot is like between seven and eight anything more than that is detrimental anything more than eight or nine hours it goes in the opposite direction. It's more harmful than it is good. It's as harmful so as So the whole thing is, is that if you're overweight and you have a CPAP machine, you're not sleeping, you're eight hours, you know, there, there's something you're going to have to do about that because it's really important to get that sleep that you need. It, it's, it's not something to just blow off. I mean, I remember I used to work 18-hour days and all the other stuff like everybody else did, and, and you, you're lucky you get four hours one day and then you get 12 the next day and whatever the heck it is. But, you know, you have to try and get in that – the circadian rhythm, I think, is what it is. You have to get in that rhythm of sleep that, so that you know that you're getting your rest. Because if you're not getting your rest, it's what happens with all the rest of the diseases. You're, you're putting stresses on other parts of your body that are making that happen. So, so, stress, so sleep, the, the sleep can is help really you, the big thing. Sleep, sleep can help you with this whole lifestyle change, getting that sleep. Yeah, this is delicious. We will mm -hmm. uh, we'll be covering a lot more of that in the retreat. So, yeah, so we put together this amazing retreat at Goldhead Branch State Park, and Dr. Patel here is going to do an amazing group um, group session, and what are we going to do? We're going to evaluate these six pillars. He's got, tell us what it is. What did you create? When he's eating. <laughs> we got That's him. why this is cook, chat, and chat out, because we... <laughs> So the six pillars of lifestyle medicine that we talked about, I've created a 15 question, a detailed question uh, questionnaire. And so everybody will be having that questionnaire up front, so they'll fill it out. Mm -hmm. And then we'll go through it and talk about it in, as a group to identify places and things that you can address and change on all those six aspects of lifestyle medicine. So you'll leave with a plan to, to make some specific changes. Yeah, because uh, as I said, it starts with nutrition, but it has to have the full circle of the lifestyle. I got the almond. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, got, I got a nut. That's really good. Um, so we're going to really work on these things. So even if you think, oh, well, I'm already doing a whole food plant-based diet or, oh, well, my relationship's good or, you know, but you know that stress is an issue or activity is an issue or maybe you don't know that. And toxins. Everybody and toxins. Has toxins. Toxin. Maybe you really don't know. And so this is going to really open up a lot of um, inspiration for changes that, like that power that you said that we all have to make these changes in our life. So um, I'm really excited for that. And I'm gonna be doing a session where I take everybody through how to create their own whole food plant-based menu, which people don't realize is so simple. I just, I take the overwhelm out of it and you'll leave the retreat with your own whole food plant-based menu that you will love, that will keep you going this way um, or start you out this way. So this is for um, vegan curious and already vegan people. So even if you're already vegan and you're like, yeah, I already know how to do that, you have probably not heard Dr. Patel talk about these six pillars. You may or may not know Dr. Dean Ornish's protocol, which includes many of these pillars. Um, you may or may not know that you can infuse your water with intention and what else? Yeah, so you can infuse it with gratitude and intense, good intentions. But also you can put, uh, you know, a few twigs of uh, mint or you can slice right. some yeah. lemon, orange. You can create your own infused water rather than putting more crystal light and chemicals in it. And we're going to be doing all of that. And, and not only that... I rented 12 cabins on the lake at Goldhead Branch State Park. And just in case you're like worried about this, 
the cabins are air conditioned and they all have refrigerators so that you know you don't, have, you don't have to worry that it's the middle of august in florida it's going to be terrible mm. We have an indoor space to have meals if we want to, or outdoor in the pavilions, and we're going to be hiking in this ravine state park. We will also be preparing all of the vegan meals on site. You're going to help us do it so you can yeah. learn how to do it. It's, yeah. an, it's a, a fully immersed weekend so that you can gain your confidence in what you want to do. And if, and if you already know how to do the cooking, you'll learn five new recipes, right? And so that you'll be able to... Um, totally know that the whole weekend is vegan. You don't have to worry about what are you going to be eating. It's such a pleasure to go on a vacation and so the plate is empty. The plate is clean. <laughs> <laughs> two two servings, two three servings. I had three. three. Yeah. I had three. <laughs> three. I'm on number two, but I'm doing all the talking. So um, <laughs> so that so we're going to be hiking this ravine state park and. So it's not an adventure hike. It is a actually a beautiful hike. Um, the um, elevation is similar all the way through. It is not a big uphill or a big downhill. It's absolutely stunning in there. Mostly I, flora and fauna, and you'll yeah. see some owls, and you'll see some osprey and some eagles and but, things but like that. But more than anything, you'll no be snakes. surrounded by <laughs> you'll be surrounded by the forest, which goes a lot toward this stress and toxins and if you sure. come with a couple you'll be working on your relationship and so we're also going to be doing working on meditation to reduce stress so i've got ray coming to do yin yoga and um dino coming to do sound therapy with the drums and yeah, all the sound bath of, therapy. the sound bath is really very it's nice. sound therapy sound it's not therapy the crystal good. bowls but um <clears throat> and then i've got this uh, massage therapy couple coming so we're going to be learning how to do our own self massages for a time when you're feeling stress and you need to do it yourself and then also you'll be able to get full-on massages it's a whole week of learning weekend, on, weekend of learning these six pillars um, also there's a lake we're going to be swimming in and I rented canoes for everybody so um, yeah, this there will be downtime for yeah. self Self-respect, yeah. uh, self-inspection, and, and reflection, and inspection, so, self-inspection. <laughs> yeah, you gotta, you gotta take an inventory once in a while. So, yeah, that's the way it goes. Make sure everything's in there. That's make it. You gotta make sure. <laughs> so, um, so that's that about the retreat. I'm gonna put the link for it if you're interesting, interested in coming. Um, couples have a bedroom in each cabin, and the cabins are shared with other people at the same time. And we did this at the Williston retreat when we snorkeled in the cave and the shared cabins worked fabulously. Yeah, they, they really did enjoy yeah. that. Right, time. Florence, right? Florence came on that one. All right, so let's can Don is okay, more questions. <laughs> Don is asking, can the lifestyle help with gallstones? I might add kidney stones. So gallstones, uh, I don't think we have any long you know study or data. Mm -hmm. If you lose weight like 20, 30 pounds very fast, you are also at risk of forming gallstones. So that's another reason why you don't want to lose weight drastically, but you want to lose weight more steadily and let it come down you know, mm -hmm. gradually so yep. that you're not increasing the risk of getting gallstones. Um, Would you say a pound a week some, is good for yeah, that? Yeah, a pound a week or okay. two pounds a week, two depending pounds on week. the person. Like Steve. Uh, is but very, if, it, very if it's half a pound that week, don't, don't stress about right. it. It's okay. Right. Or if it's no weight loss that week, that's okay too. As long as eventually you're still heading in a lower the direction. The whole trajectory is down. Is the key, yes. Okay. Because you may lose more weight early on, but then once you start hitting a little plateau, it may slow down. So right, Judy? Judy knows about that. If you just focus on the number, then you can create right. more stress. So can it help with gall? Stones. There is some anecdotal data, you know, that gallstones went away, but I don't have any large studies to quote or any, you know, big data set to go by. But uh, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't try. hurt. Would you say that a whole food, plant based way of eating helps most body systems? Yes. Or all of them? And especially for gallstones, a gallbladder responds to fat in contrast to fat. So any type of fat ingestion. In our body, the gallstone gets signals to compress and release the bile, mm. which has the bile salts, which helps fat digestion. 
So if you are eating a whole food plant-based diet, it's naturally low in fats. You're going to definitely help relax your gallbladder. Yeah. And not have it work over time, but, you know, work less. Mm -hmm. And uh, it lowers uh, inflammation throughout the body. So if it can lower inflammation inside the gallbladder. <clears throat> That's all good. So um, that was a good answer for that. Okay, Nikayla says, my endocrinologist told me that I would never reverse my type 2 diabetes. Is that true? And why do they do that? Why? So, because uh, endocrinologists are not taught about uh, how to use lifestyle. Not training in not nutrition. Not trained in nutrition. And whatever nutrition is, you know, that is training there in nutrition is more focused on fat, protein, carbohydrate, mm -hmm. and, you know, just working Whoa. on changing the fractions. <laughs> It's not Hi, really understanding that there is a world to... outside of mm -hmm. carbohydrates and insulin. It is, Wouldn't you, know, you think that they would be trained since the food is causing it? It's really ironic. It's really uh, crazy. But that is changing. There are lots of different programs, including lifestyle medicine mm -hmm. and nutrition in their training. Different med schools are doing mm -hmm. that. And uh, we as physicians, and we have formed a nonprofit here in Tampa. So yeah. we try to get the message out. And I always engage with other of my fellow physicians and friends um, <clears throat> to, you know, spread the message. So I'm doing my bit, but uh, yes, yes, we would wish are. it would move faster than it is. Well, so, you know, a hundred uh, years of doing something <clears throat> one way is not going to change yeah. overnight. It's going to take right. time. And, you know, it's been a couple of years that we really started to hit this. And, yeah. and yeah, we have started they have, turning. We, they, they have, they it's have, they, they are turning. The fact that we have this yeah. group in Tampa with this many physicians is a big deal. But also yeah. they have the lifestyle medicine colleges too that are right. taught in courses yeah. in, in, in not only in New Jersey, but mm -hmm. in San Diego and different places that they're starting to get out. But four of them out of 10,000 schools, yeah. is it's making a dent, but it's got to get out there more. Once they see it, I think mm -hmm. it's going to make a bigger difference as we keep going we down the road. Because we can't keep going the way we're going. There's, there's, there's just too much no. disease in this country. You want the yogurt? Um, so, Nikayla, to your point, I'm going to put in... more? No. You sure? I'm you took put, as much as I took. I'm going <laughs> to put... In. I had three servings. You get one, the same amount. <laughs> yeah. You got to come it's and okay. show your plate. So, um, okay, let me tell you guys this thing. So, I'm going to pop into the comments so that you can all have a copy of this. This is the nutritional update for physicians from Kaiser Permanente. That Did, did you know that? Thank you Kaiser much. Permanente published an update for physicians to prescribe plant-based diets to their patients who present with pre-diabetes, pre-high blood pressure, pre-high cholesterol. And so it's an entire... Come on over here. It's an entire meta-analysis of all the data that shows that these conditions can be reversed. And they give patients a 20-page booklet as well. Everyone, that's my dad, probably. Yep, see his plate? See this big plate? <laughs> And look how little his dad is. Oh, <laughs> Glad you joined us. That's terrific. Thank you, thank you. So, Nikayla, you can print that and bring it to your doctor because it is a um, a published study in the Permanente Journal. All right, let's see what else. So, Nikayla, no, that is not true. What you heard here tonight proves that you can reverse type 2 diabetes. And if you want those explanations again you can go back when we're done here you can go back and listen to dr patel explain it all over again until you understand um i also highly recommend you watch the documentary forks over knives where they explain um in very great detail how this way of eating reverses type 2 diabetes and heart disease okay vin says he really enjoyed our cook chat and chow down thank of you of course um, Elisa says, I'm so making this. Yes, definitely, definitely. Judy says, this has been absolutely amazing. Nikayla says, thank you for giving me hope that this lifestyle can help me. You've already started, Nikayla. I heard you already say that you've already lost weight and you've already started, so keep going. Okay. Yeah, you can you can look up khichdi recipe on yep. the internet and you'll find lots of variations. But not this one. The only, <laughs> not oil free. The only, yeah. the only yeah. thing is this is oil free. So. And that's what you want. You don't want to keep using oil. No. Rosanna is on. You did hear everything I mentioned you and how you reversed your pre-diabetes and never have to worry about it anymore. Yay for Rosanna. Okay, so anything else that you want to say? 
The power is in your hands. The That's power is in your hands. And if you want more power, come and play with us and learn with us on this retreat, August 2nd If you didn't hear me before, yeah. it's not your DNA. It's your it's dinner. dinner. It's, it's, dinner. Your, it's your dinner. And you need to it eat really dinner is. like your dinner. this. All right? It's your dinner. That's it. All right, everybody. I'm so glad you joined us for a cook chat and chat down with the Patels and with David and me. And um, we will see you in the group. We'll see you on the retreats. We'll see you on the live streams. All right. Bye. Bye.